is 9.24. I've been on watch for a few hours. We passed the Skellig Islands where one of the Star Wars movies was filmed, where Luke Skywalker did his Jedi meditations. So we passed by that and things were going great, but then the wind started to die down. The speed went from six knots to five to four and a half, and then I thought, okay, if it, if it hits four for too long, then I'll, I'll put the main up. I had a double reef in the main. The speed had increased because I put the double reef main up, but not above five. So I went back out and I shook out the one reef and went to a single reef main, all in the dark with uh, Ana and Mo sound asleep down below. When we got to the single reef, it brought our speed way up. Five and a half, six knots, everything was great. After about an hour, the wind started to die down more. And I was thinking, well, I should probably shake out that last reef and go to a full main. And then I told myself, you know what, wait, wait for another 10 minutes, see what happens. And then boom, the wind picked up and now we're going seven and a half knots. And I am really glad that I did not take that last reef out and go to a full main. If anything, I'm now thinking that I might put that second reef back in, but hopefully not because I just don't want to go out on deck in the dark. And that's the report, all is well. off from Dingle. We're coming out right now. 479 miles to go. It says we're going to get there in approximately three days. It said three to four and now it's yeah anywhere from two to four somewhere on three. That is the beginning of the journey. Got a ways to go.
the weather forecast is it for it to come down. Yeah, all, all is good. Had a great sleep last night. And uh, a little tired, but it's lovely being back out at sea again. Hello, Drake. Look who it is. <laughs> I was just saying to the camera, I was just thinking about shaking a reef. <laughs> oh, like I said the word reef and drink appears, yeah. It's all good. Would you like a cup of tea or coffee? Uh, yeah, I was gonna make a coffee now in a minute if you if you want, I can do it. I can make one for you, you want to That that would be really cool. Yeah. Drake's just after getting up and he's making some hot water for coffee for us. It's really nice out here. It's about 10, 15 knots maybe. We got one reef in the main and a full jib out. Yeah, it's maybe time to shake the first reef. So we're gonna have a cup of coffee. Drake's gonna check the weather uh, and then see what we wanna do. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. It's very hot. Okay. So be careful. I will. How's your last one? Your overnight. Really quiet. It was frustrating because the wind just kind of went slower yeah. and slower and I kind of going when I shake the reef. How did you get on last night? Ah, uh, it was really nice to sleep. This last sleep was like, kind of needed it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't put no. No, you didn't. Oh, I can do it. I don't like it. <laughs> Drake's very tired as you can see. <laughs> but you can see the engine vibrations in the coffee. Look at that. You're good to go. <laughs> it is gonna go shake out the reef. So yeah, like I'm so out of practice. Yeah. yeah. It's been a long time. Since Welcome been back. back. Yeah. <laughs> good to be back. Just undo the second reef line and lay it down on deck. Yeah. Uncoil it so it can go free. And then do the same thing on the other side with the other reef line. And then yep. take the reefing line off the winch. Alright, you want that to go free. All the tension off of it. And now you can raise the main. Might need another wrap around. I'm gonna put another wrap on the winch. I'll hold it. Recoil the line and put it back on the cleat. Back to sailing! Back to sailing. <laughs> Seven years since we could do this. Yeah. But you never forget. And you spent so much time with this boat, sailing this boat, you know this boat. I feel like, honestly, because people kind of go, oh, do you help deliver boats? I'm like, no, I kind of go hang out with friends and then I like, <laughs> just happen to sail with them at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, I can't imagine delivering a boat on a long distance passage that I don't know, yeah. you know, figuring stuff out while you're offshore. I mean, What's that alarm? <laughs> 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 that's going to increase our speed a bit. Yeah. It's interesting to see how you coil the line differently than I do. I like that. That's that, good. That's from roughly. Oh really? We gotta coil these ones too a little bit, but like the mini version of what you just did. So you went, you went like that, and then you you did. And then yeah, pretty much yeah. This and, and then, then you over off the loop through there, and then back over itself. 
like you pull on the bitter end. Oh, that's it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, man. I hope it's going to be good sailing when that wind picks up. It's nice that we're not in high engine RPMs also because like just low RPMs uses a lot less fuel than the high RPM. So just a little bit of engine to get us up to above five knots, but not using too much fuel, hopefully. For today's breakfast, we're making fluffy pancakes, flour, sugar, baking powder, salt, egg, milk, and melted butter. One cup of flour. Mixing bowl. I put this towel here because these things were banging like that. The cool thing about this app is that you can scale things up. So I'm gonna go one and a half. So now it tells me instead of one cup, I'm using one and a half cups. Because I think one might not be enough. One and a half tablespoons sugar. There we go. Tablespoon baking powder. No, 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 no. Baking powder. Three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. It's one and a half large eggs. So we'll just use two. One and an eighth cups of milk. Just melting the butter. making pancakes, which is a real treat this morning. We had our coffee, we put the main up, to full. we took the reef out, and here we're sitting at six strong, six knots, uh, nothing under five and a half, that's for sure. So that's uh, nice to see. As you can see, this is the weather. Nice. Nice. As it's at halfway out, because we're on the beam reach. The wind is going to be changing direction. It's going to die off and then it's probably going to start coming off from our starboard side. What do you think? I'm sitting steady at five knots. Oh yeah, shut her down, yay! Ah, <sighs> five knots. It's because you took that wreath out. Turkey rushers. No. No. Yeah. Uh, five minutes, okay? It's so long. I want to do something down here. Are you sure? Yeah. I think if I sit up there. And the, the horizon and everything. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mo, you want some orange with your pancake? You sure? Mm. All right, here you go. Oh. Thank you so much. I'm gonna put the syrup on for you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, there you go. Oh my god, thank you so much. You're great. All right. Thank you. Thank and you. Make the syrup Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, remember? Fiona docked in Portugal. At Jemima originally. Wow. Little woman. <laughs> Little woman. <laughs> How were you feeling when you were down below? Okay or? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. yeah, I generally don't get seasick. Yeah. yeah. Not on this boat. Mm -hmm. You know, like on a power boat for days at sea where the motion is different than I get really sick. But but I'm kind of used to this, mm -hmm. the motion of the full keel double ender heavy boat. Mm -hmm. I got to tell you something. You're not going to believe it. Well, You remember when we were in Svalbard and like we saw Pulley Pinton and the walruses and yeah. Mialison, we did all that stuff to the north, mm -hmm. but I really wanted to see that plane wreck yes. and we tried to go there. Mm -hmm. We went south and we passed Longyearbyen and 
and I really wanted to get to the plane, but the wind was against us, and so finally I was like, this is going to be really rough, and you're like, oh, I don't want to do it. I'm like, ah, okay. Yeah. And we turned around, we went back to Barrettsburg, mm -hmm. and I was kind of bummed out because I wasn't going to get to see my plane. Yeah. Well, it was only like two weeks ago that <laughs> I found this Norwegian magazine article and translated it to English and it talked about how the plane had actually been removed from the site in like 2010. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the plane wasn't there. It was never Amazing. there. Amazing! Can you imagine? Can, oh. can you imagine if we had gone all the way the, down there? It was this fucking way? <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, man. Oh, it was never there. <laughs> the article even had photographs of the helicopters yeah. that were using cables to <laughs> lift the plane away from the site. I was like, it oh, was this... never there. Oh, it wasn't there. You had said about going back to see it. I'm glad that you saw that as opposed to going back to Svalbard. Yeah, 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 yeah. We were determined to go back to Svalbard and I, I had to see that plane wreck and so you know just before COVID we had made all of the preparations we had gone through the paperwork with Sisselman we got the new insurance for another year that's required to go up there the boat was actually all provisioned and we had found a weather window to sail to Faro, and from Faro we were going to jump to Svalbard. That was the plan. Mm. And then lockdown happened. We literally were going to leave in two days, and then the lockdown happened, and no boats were allowed to go anywhere. People had to stay in their homes. The marina got quarantined, or they locked the gate. And even if you owned a boat, you weren't allowed onto the docks to go to your boat. And we couldn't go to Svalbard. The boat sat in the berth for the next 18 months without moving, ever moving. Good thing was that the boat was completely stocked, totally provisioned to go to Svalbard because there was just chaos in the grocery stores and everything got bought out. And so, I don't know, if we had gone and tried to get to that plane, yeah. it wouldn't have been there. <laughs> I couldn't believe that it. That would have been, I mean, it's still an amazing place to go see yeah, anyway. Yeah, it's yeah. still an amazing place, but you don't. If you're kind of looking for this plane, and then, where is it? Where is it? And then you find your article after, and you're going, oh, okay. In retrospect, that would have been awful if we had. Well, you know, who knows? Things happen. It would have been for, an adventure, is it? Like, yeah. it, the whole thing was an adventure, really. Like, so. Yeah, actually, going to Barentsburg was quite the adventure. <laughs> I will always be grateful for what you did when Mo hit her head. <laughs> oh. Oh. You were like, everybody calm down, the situation under control, we're gonna clean the wound, Drake, it's okay. <laughs> I remember I was freaking it's, out. I don't know if you remember or not, I sent the first date instructor who I'd gone on the course with, I sent her a postcard from Svalbard. Oh yeah. I went on another first date course with her recently and she was telling everybody else, but somebody here sent me a postcard from Svalbard from the Arctic Circle. <laughs> I was like, oh, that was me. <laughs> Where he was a part of some real first aid on a head wound. Pretty much like Yeah. Like I remember starting out and everybody, some people would have like war stories and then the course sometimes will turn into that when I kind of go, I don't want to be like that. But when she brought it up, she's like, would you mind telling people? I'm like, oh, no. okay. <laughs> you know what came up? Remember the, the shadows under the ice? Remember she had like the, the real Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. They say that that could be from if you get hit in the face or the head, the bruising can pool underneath the ice. Aye. So they were kind of going, if somebody's not conscious and then you see something like that, then you're kind of going, oh, there's an indication of a head injury there. like. So, but I was going, I saw that! <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> that was it. Oh my god. But that coal town was cool. I remember I got a tour from one of the locals. Right, we went right. to see those dogs. Oh, that was I'll so go. cool. It was a great trip. I wouldn't mind going back there someday. So, I was seeing on news reports about Svalbard. Because whenever I hear anything about Svalbard in the news, I'm always like interested in paying attention. But apparently, because of the war in Ukraine, no boats from Longyearbyen go to Barentsburg. 
there's no more tourism to Barentsburg. Oh, okay. So Barentsburg is really much more isolated. isolated. Mm. Yeah. I wonder what it's like up there now. Who knows? Maybe we'll go back there someday. Maybe, mm. maybe. It's a cool You'll spot. get an email from me saying, "You want to go to Spalberg?" Hey, hey Anna. <laughs> yeah. How is that? Oh, you ate all your pancake. <laughs> just about. It's just so rolly. Mm -hmm. I feel better from laying down. Mm. We're gonna test out the wind vane. Mm. That's exciting. Thank you. I don't know what the watch rotation schedule is right now, but I'll figure it out and let you know. Three o'clock. Three o'clock what? That's when I'm on. You're on at three? Okay, cool. And it was nine, it's nine to twelve. You're twelve to three. I'm three to six. Three to six. All right. Have a good off watch. Mm. So your plan changed for COVID and then Ukraine, like you've been planning on going to yeah. Russia. We're like, okay, well, Svalbard's out. What's next? Where, where do we go? What do we do? And we have this whole thing, the Schengen countries. Uh, we can only be in there for three months before we got to leave. not Schengen, where can we spend a winter that's not the UK? And we did a lot of research and it was like, okay, well, there's Turkey, there's Albania, and there's one small area that's in Europe that's owned by Russia, and it's actually a big, sprawling Russian military complex. Lots of military is based there. Way before they invaded Ukraine, we are like, yeah, let's go to Russia. Let's go, let's go to this place in the middle of Europe that's technically Russia, it's not Schengen. We actually were in the process of hiring this special agent that was going to get us the visa to go to Russia. And he was also a sailor, so he was going to help us get into a marina. And we were studying Russian, and we learned the Russian alphabet, so we can actually read Russian now. You, you don't know what it means, but we can read it. We studied hard. Everything was moving in that direction, and then they invaded Ukraine. And we were like, well, that plan fell apart. But here we are. Now we're going to Spain. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be great. Oh, and then now we're like, let's go to Morocco. And then, and then I read that there was this massive earthquake. earthquake. And we're wondering, is that going to change things? So now we don't want to go there. We thought a lot about it. And then we figured, well, we'll still go. Yeah. We'll still go to Morocco. The capital, which is much further to the north, only got little tremors and no damage. And that's where we're planning to go. And we're not going to move a boat in Morocco at all. We're going to get to Rabat, get into the marina, and boat's not going to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. you know? They have armed guards on the dock yeah. all the time. Okay. Like, because the king of Morocco has his own dock in the marina oh. with only his boats on it and then there are the other docks with the other boats but like the king of Morocco has his boat right there there are guards not just on his dock but every dock has oh. like an armed guard 24 hours a day amazing yeah so got some good security you guys hey. have <laughs> hey Bob how's it going hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to see the king <laughs> no you're not <laughs> <laughs> That would be wild if we met the king. That would be if cool. he came down to take his boat out and walked by our dock and saw us. And Tell me all your story. <laughs> yeah. Doof. Can I make you a coffee? Yeah. I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah. Sure? I gotta. I gotta do that. Okay. Because I mean, leave something for me. Because you I mean you made breakfast. You're settling in. I'm settling in. <laughs> I'm settling in. We're on a a bee reach. Slightly towards a broad reach, but more of a beam reach. Now might be a good time to test the wind vane. Oh, yeah. With the hydro vane? The hydro vane, yeah. Nice. Now, I've never done this before, so this is going to be the first. Cool. I want to make sure conditions are as good as possible before we do <laughs> the first test. Conditions are perfect. Yeah, we're on a beam reach. 
tip can actually come out just a little bit. That's better. Five knots. Nice and balanced. There are these little pins, one that locks rudder in place and one that locks the vane in place. I'm going to go take those pins out and then I'll return to the cockpit and we'll engage it from here. Minute or two. <laughs> this is cool. Just let it settle into this groove for a while before I start making adjustments. We're not using electricity, and it's a backup. Yeah, you know, it's, a, it's a it's a backup auto steering device. But also, if the rudder fails and there's a tiller right on the thing, you just go back there and you can steer by hand. Okay. Mm. Yeah, it's a tiller. Ah. The tiller will control the rudder. So when we lost our steering off of Greenland, you know, if we had had that then you probably wouldn't have had to work with the emergency tiller mm -hmm. and it probably would have been a whole lot less stressful because immediately one of us could have just gone back there and grabbed it and you're in control. Yeah. No. Not bad. Not bad at all. I wanted to steer more to port. So I've got to figure out which way do we turn that thing if we want to steer more to port. I'm just going to go back there and try to figure that one out. So if we want to go more to port, then we want the rudder to go like that. So we want the uh, main to go more like this. To do that, I can pull it this way. Let's see if that makes us go more to port. It may not be quite windy enough. It looks like it's coming more back on. On course there. Yeah. Wow. Let's do this for a little while. Our speed's not quite up to five. But good for a test run. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. First time using it. Wow. Now I got all the tools to work. Sometimes you see it go down to 4.2, and other times it's at like 5.4. You got more wind. Oh yeah! Oh. Awesome. Alright, is that going to send us to starboard? Yep. I guess with adjustments to the hydrophone vane, maybe you gotta wait for a while before you can see the full effect. Speeds up. Maybe I'll just do a slight, slight turn of the wheel to starboard. This is working for me, 6.2. 